yeah one more anybody here seen this cotton is correct but not weaving anybody anybody else obviously you can see the cotton okay so this is called the ginning uh, it's called the ginning machine of li whitney okay so he was the patenter american inventor who created the ginning machine which separates cotton and the fiber and the seed which enabled the production mass production of cotton so he was one of the first people in the world to do this but not the only person and therefore he had patent troubles right so all of you understand in this intellectual property and there were a lot of typical american style even in those days they had lawyers and they were fighting over who invented it so he did not make much money out of this but this was really and then he set up other businesses to maybe make guns which is under that american great american invention so he got a co contract from the government of us to make guns and he set up a factory so one of the first people to set up a factory to make anything that people could buy in large numbers next slide yeah fast next next slide please yeah okay this is a little bit easier yeah so who invented this edison that's correct and do you know how many patents he had he had well over a thousand patents so not only did he invent the light bulb he also invented electricity transmission the movies the cinemas all of you like cinemas here right so he invented the phonograph the the movies and all of these were all created by him right he was one of the people who set up an industrial research center and this is already over 100 years old and this company is now of course known as ge to all of us here so this was the early days right so all the early innovators were single people and they had a lot of knowledge so it was not just knowledge of one subject but knowledge of many many subjects right so here again the idea is if we need to think or do something we must have knowledge across a wide variety of things right because it is in the interfaces in the connections in the boundaries that's where innovation is going to come from okay so after individual inventors then companies had been set up and then it became too expensive there were a lot of money being spent on research so again a quick question right dupont so what is that what is the picture you see there anybody know what that is okay let me make it simple let me, let me since we have to go get through a little bit faster that is nylon okay one of the great inventions of the materials era right from the nylon and the plastics that was a uh, all the revolution of dupont and procter and gamble this is a very interesting one of course younger people are not likely to know but definitely the faculty members and older people in the audience should have used that that's actually the disposable diaper okay this is a great technological invention from procter and gamble right it they make they make lots of money do not smile it's a multi billion dollar business right and png makes lots and lots of money and lots and lots of these are used and they are rotting in landfills and creating a big environmental issue okay so then we have uh, the anybody recognize that so the boy should know that do you know what that is that's the original spy plane built by lockheed martin called the u2 and and this was done by engineers who were working not on the regular time but in separate private r&d groups so that's why it's called the skunk works and this place is famous uh, boeing has a facility there it's it's in st in the city of st louis in the state of mississippi yeah next slide please okay so now we come to the modern world right how does this all what does this all mean to us so digital was set up in the 70s digital corporation right and they maybe had an investment of i don't know 100000 or something like that from venture capitalists right so venture capitalists and people started investing money in new startups like google right and then came from the universities right so university of virginia has the y combinator i'm sure some of you have heard these terms over here right and a lot of indian indian institutes are also looking to set up incubators etc i know iit madras has a very uh, good program and they definitely do also welcome um, students and uh, interested entrepreneurs from other institutes it's not restricted to the uh, alumni or students of iit madras for example next slide please so so what does this all mean right so you know there have been innovators and is there a process okay so peter drucker if you heard the name is one of the world's leading management gurus right and this is what he has said on, on, on and, and can you spot right this is not restricted to in, to r&d groups or restricted to individuals right so blackberry so what did blackberry do better than everybody else right and we heard the terms push and pull right so blackberry was one of the first to introduce the push email concept 
So if you saw, if you were traveling 15 years ago, you would see everybody in the U.S. as soon as the flight landed, everybody would pull out a BlackBerry and check their email because the email had already been pushed to their device. Right? Similarly, the iPhone. Okay, how many of you use the iPhone here? Anybody use the iPhone? Okay, not not many here, but uh, but but you but you know they they were not the first smartphone, but but they could build on the learnings that other people had, and they could then create a product that everybody would like to have. Okay, uh, next slide. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave one or two for your research work. So, so, so very interestingly, so I'm going to talk a little bit about McDonald's. Anybody here eaten McDonald's? Yeah, there. Just one? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's good. That's better. That's a lot better, right? So, so can you can you imagine what have they? What did they do differently, right? There were restaurants before McDonald's, and there are restaurants after McDonald's, right? So, the whole idea of being able to put together food as a factory model, right? These are called as QSR, quick service restaurant. So they can give you your food within two minutes of your order, right? And they have combinations, you can order them and you can really, uh, you, you can enjoy and eat them if you like, right? And this has created a whole, and they have created a whole chain of industries, right? They need to have the, 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 the cold chain to be able to store all of these items. They need, a, they, they, they need people to buy the raw material, be it the potatoes or bread buns or etc etc right so the whole supply chain and the storage of food and how it gets to you and in every place it should ideally taste the same right so this is this is this is innovation in in food delivery for example so there is opportunities in every business area that you can dream of next slide please okay so what is today right recognize that i know we got a lot of cricket we are all cricket fans here and the world cup coming up so everybody so what do I mean by that, right? When we were young, right, a Gavaskar or a Kabil Dev had to go to England to play and make money. Now what happens? Everybody has to come to Chennai and be part of CSK, right? To to right to to build on their careers, right? So this is this is how the uh, and and this this was set up by by a group of people who thought that we could do a league in India, and and you can see the replication. Now we have leagues in tennis, in kabaddi, in badminton, etc., etc. So you can see how innovations are spawning off imitations in this case. Next slide. Okay, uh, you all know of the growth of the internet. I'm going to just skip through some of that. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so so is everything invented? Are there still opportunities for young people like you to do something? And there, there are some examples, right? So. Uh, you know, I, I could remember a time when I used, when I punched cards, right, to access a computer. And today all of us carry it in our hands, right? So this is the reimagination of what was old and what is new, right? So that's a reimagination of computing. Next slide. You have the reimagination of note taking, right? So I bought a little surface device the last time I was in the US. And, and I don't need a notebook. I used to carry, I carry a notebook to all my meetings and I used to write, write them down. Only I could understand them, right? My handwriting is really terrible. But now I have got this little device and I can write, take notes with a stylus and I can, of course, and my, my colleagues are very happy. They said, okay, not only do we know you're taking notes, but we can also, we can also, uh, I can, so I can easily pass on the information that I have learned or any action items. I don't need to retype it into a computer, for example. So this is a, this is going to save me a lot of time. Okay, cars, right? There are companies looking, right? You had, you could have a petrol car or a diesel car. You can have, now you can have a hybrid car, uh, electric car, and maybe in the future a driverless car, right? Next, please. Okay, so how, so I know, I know, you know, I spoke a lot of very nice things. So you're going to turn around and ask me, so what do you do, right? So we, in a little way, at Lucid, are trying to reimagine the world of non-destructive testing. Uh, any of you heard this term? Anybody with a mechanical engineering background? Okay, just the one hand. I think your vice chancellor has left. I got to ask him a question. He actually used to study in the same laboratory that I did, but luckily he's escaped. Otherwise, I would have definitely asked him some of those questions. Um, so NDT is actually, uh, it's not testing of software uh, without destructing it. I have been asked this question. It's actually testing of materials, testing of aircraft parts and testing of parts of a power plant, etc., etc., without damaging the body. It's very similar to medical imaging. So we are making uh, some innovations in this area of using, uh, bringing modern technology to this uh, fairly old industry. And next slide, please. 
Okay, so those are some of the examples of the kind of software that we do and some of the industries that we serve, right? So, uh, what is the, what, what do we, what do I finally wish to say, right? There's, there's going to be, there's tremendous opportunities here. But unfortunately, the first step has got to be that you must be an expert at what you know, right? So, this is very important. Right? I, I interview and I test and I interview a lot of students um, in my jobs over many years and definitely at Lucid. And I find that uh, there's many times uh, there's not the people have forgotten what they have studied even in the second, in the third year, right? When you ask them, because they said, oh, sir, we studied it in second year or we studied it in third year. Unfortunately, those answers are not going to hold you in good stead anywhere. Because if you have forgotten what you have learned the previous year, you're not going to be able to do anything new, right? Because you can only, you need to be able to build on the basis of what you have studied, okay? And uh, I will be happy to take questions uh, after this show and I leave the floor to my good friend Mohan who will really show you what you really want to do is to get the job in the first company, okay? Thank you all. Mohan is the founder director of uh, Kubos and here he is to tell you about as to what you should do to get that job that you are looking for and especially how you make the interviews turn in your favor. After all, we go to interviews only for that, not for practicing how to answer questions, right? So I've had, uh, had the privilege of working with him earlier in Cognizant. He headed the uh, health management services practice and life sciences. And now here he is. Uh, running a company of his own which does high-end HR management consulting and he has managed to network so beautifully using all the today's uh, paradigms right you now he's good with people and with processes and with technology a unique combination of a person who can give you real details. Last time he helped us with the innovation challenge that happened and he was a mentor for some of the very good projects that came up. I have great pleasure in inviting Mohan to the stage. Uh, I will try to give you my perspectives on what you should do or what you should not do actually so that you get a job not only in TCS but also in Lucid Technologies and also in many other companies like CTS. So. I don't have too many slides, I have only four slides, but I'm hoping that, you know, at the end of the conversation, um, or, you know, there will be some constructive dialogue among the three of us and all of you to, you know, to answer some of the questions, because that is when we will really know what you want to hear, okay? So, if I go to the first slide, there is a picture there. Do you understand what that picture is? So I want some interaction now. I know Anu doesn't like you to talk, but I will encourage you to talk. So tell me what that picture is. Fast, because I can't give you more than two or three minutes. Tell me whatever you think of that picture. Come on guys, get up, fast. Tell anything that you feel. What do you see there? Louder. Floor number 118, good start. Anybody else? Asking for more information, brilliant answer. Anything more? What else do you see there? Universal Studios, where is Universal Studios? Hollywood, excellent. Then what else? Do you see anything else there? 